So the four noble truths, and you were saying four aspects, the four aspects of one insight. Mm. Which is the uh, the way out of suffering. There isn't suffering. You, you you see how to escape it without trying to get rid of it. But, but first you must be able to... Well, that's the thing, yes. So, um, if you want to understand the way out of suffering, first you need to understand the suffering. And uh, people can't understand the suffering because they can't give up the pressure, the need, the urge to get rid of it, to manage it, to prevent it. Uh, and that's where it comes down to, okay, so, so what type of suffering you shouldn't be trying to prevent or get rid of. Because sometimes people can now mistake that, thinking, okay, it's like self-torture or ex extreme asceticism and so on, starving yourself. No, that might be helpful if that's what brings that right type of suffering, for which you need to know first what the right type of suffering is. And it's the suffering on the level of whatever's felt. So you need to endure and not act out of uh, the pressure towards more pleasure when you're feeling agreeable. You need to endure and not act out of the pressure towards uh, getting rid of the pain when you're feeling disagreeable. You need to give up and not act out of the pressure to basically ignore the when it's neither pleasant nor unpleasant state of feeling that you have. And that's, that's the hardest to endure, because that's why people find sensory strain hard, because you have to endure that pressure. That's why they, they find it hard to not try to manage the suffering or explain it or psychologize it, because you have to endure the pressure. And that's why they have, find it really, really hard um, to not distract themselves when they're feeling neither pleasant nor unpleasant, to not find something to do to not be, find some act, act, activity to keep them occupied because then it just becomes very unpleasant. See, if you endure things on that level and don't act out there, you don't need to do any asceticism at all. That is the, the that is the true tapas, as the Buddha said. That is the true enduring towards the purification through that endurance. But it's actually much easier <laughs> to work yourself up and build up a determination and, and endure this extreme physical discomforts and, and uh, practices, as long as you don't endure them on that emotional level of, of comfort, discomfort and neutral feeling. That's where the dread is. And that's what I said, um, the, the asceticism is as misguided as sensuality, just in a different direction. Both equally missed the point, which is that middle ground of, yeah, what is a current enduring feeling and what's my attitude towards it? Am I welcoming it, delighting it? Am I trying to get rid of it? Um, uh, psychologize it, manage it, explain it, ignore it, distract myself from it because I can't bear the boredom. All right. Endure things on that level? As I said before, you will not need much of an instruction then because you already have the right basis and uh, the certain obvious aspects of your situation will become like revealed, such as Right, okay, so yeah, I am liable to this suffering and everything I've been doing so far has not uprooted it, has, has not even been in the direction of uprooting that suffering. It was only on the level of management and distraction from it. And the Dharma is direction, that direction of uprooting. So it's completely the opposite way of completely <laughs> against the stream and the directions that I've been going so far. But for that, you first need to endure it on that right level. That's what I mean. You have to understand the suffering first in order to see the way out. So you need to stop trying to get rid of the suffering and manage it in order to understand it. You need to allow it to be, endure, in order for it to be understood. Because it takes time to understand it. And you sort of deny that time by trying by covering up the suffering or getting rid of it or or just managing it to, 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 to not be felt anymore. But you know it will come back. So you haven't really uprooted its nature. You haven't pulled out the, the, the source, the roots. While it's there in front of in front in, in, yeah. in your face. Yeah, something. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the true asceticism of the correct kind. 
can you endure the pain without uh, expressing it, without trying to get rid of it, without psychologizing it, without hateful thoughts, without turning away and ignoring it? Can you just stay with it? Can you endure the suffering? You without doing anything on account of it. Yeah. Because now, okay, now I'm going to endure the suffering. Exactly. So I can get rid of it. Yeah. So you start enduring the suffering, maybe for one second rightly, and then the two, next second you fall into, now I'm enduring it because I want to get rid of it. Mm. So what do I do then? It's like, well, you include that into your endurance of suffering that you don't want to get rid of. Because yes, you can endure the suffering, Rightly, but then you can endure it wrongly if it got uh, if you become motivated by different reasons, such as you're not enduring it for its own sake, you're enduring it to get rid of it, which means right. Well, now I'm back onto the old attitude. So how do you stop that? By enduring it. It's not going to be perfect, but as long as you know that you're supposed to endure it without acting out of it. Even that mind that makes that endurance as acting out of it will come down if you don't act out of it and if you endure it sufficiently enough without turning away. Because then you can, well, yeah, yeah the, f the first noble truth. Mm. This is suffering. Yeah. Now this monks is the noble truth of dukkha, suffering. Birth is dukkha, aging is dukkha, death association with the despised, separation from the loved, mm. not getting what one wants is yeah. dukkha. In brief, the five assumed aggregates. Yeah, the five aggregates affected with assumption. So basically, your life is the basis for your dukkha. <clears throat> That's it. It's not like particular things are based for the dukkha. The five aggregates are basis for the dukkha. So you haven't done anything wrong, in other words. Oh, if only I didn't do that, I wouldn't say no. You were born, birth is dukkha. That's it. That's already, even if you don't do anything wrong, you're already affected with dukkha because you're already here. Everything else that comes throughout your life is kind of just a secondary reminder of what the dukkha already is and that you are already liable to. So that's, that's again, why, why uh, um, uh, a person needs to develop the state of mind that recognizes that and basically restrains themselves from trying to address the individual um, instances of suffering. Oh, he said that which upset me, she didn't do that which upset me, I'll go and talk to her, I'll tell him or to address the suffering. No, all of these things that you experience throughout your life that makes you suffer are not the reason for your suffering. If they were, freedom from suffering would not be possible. It's your craving in regard to how you feel on account of these things in the world. That's the root of suffering. But for as long as you keep acting out towards him or her or this or that or particular instances of suffering, you're not allowing yourself to see it on the right level, which means you cannot address it correctly. You're giving in. You want to get rid of it. You still blame the individual circumstances. So that's when the view needs to be developed, whereby you recognize that it's not about instances of suffering it's about the fact that you are liable to suffer that's it full stop so if it's not this instance that made you suffer it would have been something else and it will be something else so you trying to manage and perfect your ways of managing your your environment circumstances the way you speak to people the way they speak to you all of that is basically rooted in the fact that you kind of deep down know that you don't know the escape from suffering so you just want to minimize the pain. You want to manage it. And for as long as you value the management, you will not force yourself to look for the direction of uprooting it. So that's why. And that's the trap of, oh, it's helpful. Psychotherapy is helpful. Psychology is helpful. All these managements are helpful to manage the pain. But if you become dependent on management of the symptoms, you will not going to be able to endure the symptoms to reveal the source of your illness because you immediately cover up the symptoms you manage you take the pill you deal with the symptoms and it's gone and now you don't see the illness so you need to endure the symptoms by not by resisting the pressure to manage it 
which is already rooted in that kind of, I want to get rid of the discomfort. And by not managing the discomfort, you get to understand, right, now is this that made me suffer, yesterday was that, tomorrow was something else. The point is, I am liable to suffering. And even if I perfectly address this and this and that, I cannot prevent circumstances from making me uncomfortable in the future. And that's the problem. So you realize it's not about particular sufferings, it's about nature of suffering. I am sort of infected or affected. I am affected, liable. Yeah, exactly. And these particular instances of those uh, affections and infections are just the reminders of my situation that's already within that. That's what I mean. Birth is already suffering. Birth, as in manifestation. You are manifested from the moment you're born. So for as long as your manifestation is here, Dukkha is here. That's it. Even, as I said, if you don't experience anything uh, uncomfortable, no incidents, nothing, 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 sort of on the, on the level of the circumstances, you are still within Dukkha, you are still liable, and you still feel the same thing if you look in that direction. That's why you don't need great misfortunes and so on to recognize the nature of a situation. I am liable to suffer. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah I'm, I'm affected by things. I'm affected. Yeah. In, in its, you know, things happen. Yeah. I feel them. Exactly. Yeah. How, how do I feel them? Well, I either feel them pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Which means at any given time, there is some pressure basically placed on you. Let's say it like that. So it's not like, oh, see, now it's all fine. I'm not affected by suffering. Well, are you feeling something? Yes, to that extent, suffering is, is implicit in it. Because you're liable to feelings. Do, can you even conceive being in control of your feelings? Saying, I shall feel this and I shall not feel that. No, you can. that's only like on the level of wishful thinking. Yeah. Feeling is that symptom. Exactly, exactly. Of, of so the different. fact that you are not absolutely, like you have, you have no say in what feeling arises and how long it persists, and you know that, that they change. So now you have a pleasant feeling, you had it so many times before, but you also know that it has to cease at some point, which means it's most obvious if you admit to yourself that through sheer change of feeling, whichever feeling is there, you will have to experience suffering. So are you able then to not be pressured by anything that you feel at any given time? Even pleasure, because pleasure pressures you. Mm -hmm. In a, makes you nervous. Yeah. What if I lose this? What if it doesn't last long enough? Well, I want more of it. How do I protect it? How do I get it again? So it's not actually a peaceful state. Pain, obviously, it's not a peaceful state. And then <laughs> neutral feeling, boredom, is very much not peaceful, although it's peaceful. Boredom is okay, so there's nothing happening. Yet, when nothing's happening, it's the most frightening thing for the mind. It's like a numb pain. Yeah, boredom brings this dread, brings this terror. Yeah. Just three types of feeling. That's all you have. That's all you ever had. Three types of pain. <laughs> well, one type of pain. Pain of feeling. Yeah. yeah. Three types of feeling means one type of pain. One dukkha. That's what Sariputta said. Whatever's felt counts as, su count as suffering in the discipline of a noble one. If you have the right view, if you understood the nature of feeling, feelings, you understand that whatever's felt is unpleasant because it's felt. So if you feel, if you're affected, you, you can know that, well, you are infected, you have a disease. Exactly, yeah. It's a symptom of an underlying it, problem. These are symptoms of that disease that, you know, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah there's sharp pains, yeah. soft pains, yeah. numb... Yeah. means you are subjected to it. You're in, it's not healed. Uh, you are imprisoned by it. You're, you're, you're trapped within it. You're confined and so on. But if you don't see that as a symptom, as I said, if you still feel justified and have the view that management of suffering, management of symptoms, doing something about it to overcome it when it arises, 
if you don't abandon that view and if you don't restrain yourself, <clears throat> you're not going to see how deep it goes, which means you're not going to see the source of it. I'm aware of feeling. I'm, in a, in a way, aware of dukkha. Well, if you're aware of the feeling correctly, if you're enduring the feeling correctly. If I want to find myself. Yeah, so, like, so that brings then the question, what is feeling? Because most people would, again, through those views of, of, of management, proliferation and confusing information for understanding, uh, would are kind of on the level of our feeling at this like physical sensations that I have in my body. No, feeling is a state of mind. Feeling is always mental. Bodily feelings are always mental. And there's only three types of feeling on that level, which is the level of feeling. Agreeable, disagreeable, and neither agreeable nor disagreeable. Let's go to the second noble truth. And this, monks, is the noble truth of the origin of Dukkha, the craving that makes for further being. Exactly. Accompanied by passion, delight, seeking delight here and there. Whose translation is that? Uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, the further being, I'm not sure about. Anyway. So, the, uh, should I, what is it then? It brings us basically to the point I already said. So, it's the origin of Dukkha, the source of Dukkha. So the basis, the necessary condition for presence of dukkha is presence of tanha, is presence of craving. So it's not what you've seen, heard, smelled, taste, touched, thought about, remembered, planned, failed. It's about craving tanha towards what's felt there and then. That's the root of dukkha. So the world, samsara, is not, not a suffering. It's not the cause of suffering. It's your attitude that on that emotional level towards samsara. That's what suffering is. So it's your craving towards it. That's what suffering is. What craving? Well, craving for more pleasure in pleasant feeling, craving for less pain in, in painful feeling, and craving for uh, ignorance and ignoring and, and indolence in a neutral feeling. That's it. That's the root of the entire universe of suffering. But in order to get onto the level of the, that root, you need to stop acting out of that craving, which is trying to manage your suffering or pursue sensuality or constantly being distracted through, through activities and avoiding boredom and solitude. That's all these prerequisites in the form of lifestyle that the Buddha outlined are basically just ways of rounding up that that. that towards the center of that suffering, which is your craving, which is that internal thing. But if your lifestyle still revolves around, you know, sensuality, pursuing the further pleasure on account of pleasure that you felt, uh, management your suffering, getting rid of, acting out of pain, uh, unwholesome acts uh, of, of anger and, and retribution and all of that, well, there's no way you're going to uproot suffering, uh, cra craving tanha mentally, when you're physically still passionately engaged, passionately engaged and maintaining that, maintaining it, keeping it alive. So first, you physically need to stop um, acting out of it. Then verbally, then mentally, you can eventually see see the roots, um, see your own attitude towards what's currently felt, and that's where the tanha is. That that what I said before, they're trying to trying to get rid of it, trying uh, resisting it. Mm -hmm. Resisting the current enduring feeling by wanting more of it, less of it, or neither of it. Yeah, wanted None to of switch it. it off. Wanted to switch it off, wanted to change it, wanted to want to sort of yeah. act out of it because you feel actually confined within it. So you need to endure the confinement of the feeling and not act out of it. So you need to give up sensuality when it's pleasant, you need to give management of pain when it's unpleasant, and you need to give distraction and indolence when it's neutral. And that will result in a sense of confinement and uh, deep fatigue and resistance that we spoke before. But if you don't act out of it, the mind will calm down within that and then you get to see for what it is. That's wisdom. It's not a magical result of, a, of some method or, or some <laughs> accidental insight or something. Wisdom is just a development of, of strength and non-resistance on that internal level and if you stop resisting stop flinching stop looking away stop looking beyond you get to see what's right in front of you it removes that craving 
Well, well that's that's that that's world. what removes. You don't remove the craving, or I shall remove it. But if right. you stop resisting it, yeah, stop moving. Exactly. When you get to see it for what it is, then craving will sort of evaporate, because craving requires you to want to look away or more of it or less of it. That's how you're maintaining it. Right. You you, you remove it indirectly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. By not moving. Yeah. Not. Yeah. By not providing a basis for craving to move. The craving will sort of dry up. But not moving, but not trying to switch it off. Yeah. Banjo. So the third noble truth. This is the noble truth of the end of suffering. The remainderless fading away, the cessation, giving up, relinquishment, release, and letting go of that very craving. Mm. So that, that's yeah. that non so Cessation of craving means cessation of possibility to suffer on account of anything that the senses, the aggregates, the world brings you. Good or bad, doesn't matter. You cannot suffer because you cannot crave. You can't be moved. You cannot be moved, yeah. Cooling down, this passion. Mm. Yeah. Equanimity, yes. Equanimity. Yeah. And then the fourth noble truth is the no truth how of to the develop, yeah. yeah. How to develop that cessation the of the noble path. path, yeah. So that's what I mean. The right, well, the right view first always comes first. You need to know, right? So the root of the craving is not in the world, it's not in insufficient management or a, a not, you know. Okay not a perfect technique or something else. It's in the craving towards what I'm feeling. My craving towards my feeling. Nothing else. So first I need to stop acting out. So the livelihood needs to start matching that principle you're trying to develop. The the speech needs to start matching the principle. Then your efforts need to start matching. And that's no way apart. Right view, right mindfulness, right effort, and everything else that follows that results then eventually in like complete immovability of the right kind on the level of the, the what's being felt so then in the pleasure there'll just be pleasure felt there will be no more craving or in like in, in, in implicit craving for wanting more of it it's just gone so it's just yeah, to the extent the feelings present there's nothing more there's nothing less because you're not resisting it nor leaning towards it yeah it's not touching you exactly it's not yours anymore so you are not being touched by it which means it's not pressuring you anymore. There's nothing wanted in regard to it. And nothing not, not wanted in regard to it either. Mm -hmm. So pretty much the noble effort path is everything we've been describing from the beginning of this talk. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I need to understand one, two, three, and then give me these eight steps that I need to figure out. Now, understanding one, two, three is the eight steps. <laughs> is the noble eightfold path, is the right view. 